welcome back to Beautiful Minds UK. Hi, this is Elizabeth and I'm your UK advocate. I also have a US advocate for Beautiful Minds US, I mean Talks US, and she will be writing an article and I hope that you'll all take time to read it on our website. Okay, so this video is about learning to advocate for your child. Sometimes this happens before a diagnosis, sometimes this happens just after diagnosis, or sometimes just something else triggers it, and that was our case. So this is our story. And my son had just started nursery, which in the US that's equivalent for kindergarten, and it was his second IEP meeting. I was not worried at all because the first meeting went okay as I expected, I didn't have high hopes, and so... <laughs> I had no problem in doing a second meeting. Now, when I entered the room, I was a bit shocked because there were so members of staff where prior to this meeting, I was in the impression that it would be just me and my son's teacher. Now, unfortunately, this meeting fell in the afternoon. So, um, that meant I had to bring my son with me. Now, he sometimes tends to have naps and this day was no exception. So, he was sitting in my arms as I heard the staff members talk about my son. As I heard the nursery staff teachers talk, I had no problems whatsoever. But then, as they went round the table, there was one member of staff who triggered my fight to do more for my son. Now, I'm not going to say the name of this person, but <laughs> and that person brought me to tears. And, um, but now, looking back, it probably was the best comment that she could have possibly made. I had said in the meeting that I had about a year and a half before my son started school. So, me and my husband had decided to get him a private speech therapist. I thought that that was very nice for me to inform the nursery. I was not asking them for permission. I was just telling them that it, the, what we were trying at home. Now, this member of staff said, I don't want you to be wasting your money on a speech therapist. And she basically was implying that my son had no hope. Now, I think for any parent to hear that was devastating. As I looked into my son, I thought, no, what you're saying is not correct. I tried my best to hold the tears back in my eyes and was very quiet for the rest of the meeting. But as the meeting was running past school leaving time, my daughter was waiting outside the room. I was in a, and it was pouring down the rain and I quickly rushed home as fast as I could. As we got home, as we were heading home, obviously like every other older child, I was hearing, I am hungry, I am hungry, I am hungry. But I couldn't focus on her hunger needs. What I, was, what I was feeling was a sharp, a sharp stabbing pain. I went into the bathroom and I said to my daughter, Mommy will make you food in a minute. I got very upset and then I got very, very angry. As soon as I thought, okay, it's time for me to leave this room. I went to go and find my son. He, like always, was lying on our playroom floor, listening to nursery rhymes that his sister must have put on for him. I went and I laid down next to him. I held him close and I told him, I believe in you. And from this day on, mommy will do whatever she can to help you. All I need you to do is try for mommy. This was no different from when he was born. When he was born, I was destined to breastfeed this boy. But for whatever reason, the few minutes after he was born, he refused. And I asked all the staff members in the hospital, as well as my husband and my daughter, to leave the room. Soon as they left the room, I struggled to carry him in my arms. And I said, come on, it's just me and you now. We can do it. Anyway, so I kept to my word, and that evening, I had downloaded every high 
a book that I in my it's got a iPod device on speech delay. The first book that I read was Jenny McCarthy's book. I sat with a notepad and wrote down so many notes and <laughs> I looked into everything that she had put in her book. So this is where our journey began. Um uh, unfortunately the things that she listed in her book were not successful for my son. As all, as we all know in speech delay parents, that what works for one child might not work for another. And that was this case. But that didn't stop me. I thought, okay, the stuff in her book didn't work. Let's go and see what else we can learn. So I went on a learning rampage. And I discovered essential oils. Now I'm not going to list the brand that I used. Because I'm, I don't, I'm not endorsing any brand. But I tried first with uh, frankincense oil and then slowly, slowly, slowly added to it to the point that I had 10 essential oils that I was giving my son every day. Now this, obviously I will never know for sure, but this changed my son forever. It turned my boy from the lying down boy that didn't want to do anything to a boy that looked like he was running and walking and wanting to learn to use a scooter and for that I will always be grateful. They are my little miracle cures and obviously I can't guarantee that they will help your child but if you have not looked into it I I recommend that you at least do your research. So a year on the same IEP meeting in February 2018 and this time it was a hundred percent different meeting. I was prepared. I was not going to take no rubbish. Um, but thanks for my work and hard trying and no longer putting all my hopes on the NHS therapist that he had before this, before the previous meeting in 2017. <laughs> Um, Oscar, my son was a changed boy. Yes, his vocabulary wasn't strong, but he was talking and he was trying to tell me what he wanted. He was active and I had all the thanks that I could possibly give to, which would be essential oils and something else that I will do another video on, which is called the Nemechek Protocol. Now, looking back, well, I, in that IEP meeting, I told the dismember staff that her comment the previous year was not acceptable, that she really needs to think hard, unless she's a mother herself, first of all, and second, a mother of a speechless child, she will never ever know the battle that a parent of a speechless child has to endure every day. It's not an easy one, it's a very lonely one. But most of all, you can't stop fighting for your child, and and I never have. So, if you find yourself in this situation, you'll probably find that not everyone will be able to relate to you. And if they do be able to relate to you, then you're one lucky person. I find great source of help which is our Facebook page, Parents of Speech and Language Delay. This page was amazing. After my meeting in 2017, I expressed what happened in that meeting and the amount of support that I got worldwide blew me away. I also found great uh, empowerment um, in the 2017 meeting, I was told that my son was not able to do certain tasks. Now that might be that might have been true, but a few tasks that they mentioned, I knew he could do because he had done it at home. So I went and decided to do video modeling at home. This is why some of you who are watching this video know my videos that I put up in my Instagram page, Beautiful Minds, Beautiful Little Minds. Now I'm going to do another video on the power of video modeling and I hope that you watch it because it's a very powerful tool 
they will not only just help yourself, but it will help your child. I am going to end this video now, and thank you once again for watching this video all the way through. Um, if you want to contact me, please do. I will put all the information down at the bottom. And I hope this video has helped you. And I hope to also see you next Wednesday. And if you haven't done so, please do tend to subscribe and like this video. Thank you. Bye-bye.